What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be continuing our Editor Tools playlist. And in this video, we will tackle Accumulate, T, and Filter Falls. And we're almost done with this playlist. I think we're missing Product, which I will probably have to create a different video for. All right. So with that said, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll import the necessary modules. So we're going to import Accumulate, random and operator. Now operator is just the function version of the plus minus uh, division and multiplication signs and you'll see that in the examples ahead. So the next thing we'll do is uh, create a random seed. Um, if you guys are not familiar with random seeds, um, basically this is just so that random produces the same number just for reproducibility. All right, now in the next line, we will sample three numbers from a range of 1 to 100. So I run this, and now we have three numbers, 74, 5, and 55. All right, so now we're going to take a look at accumulate. So accumulate basically takes an iterable and a function. And in this case, we're going to use operator.add. So operator.add is just basically the function version of the plus sign. So Accumulate actually works very similar to reduce in that it will accumulate the output. So with uh, operator add, first we have 74, and then in the next iteration, it's 74 plus 5, and then in the next iteration, it will be the output of that with 55. So this is very similar to reduce, except that with accumulate, we will get all of the values as opposed to reduce, which we get back a single value. Now, once I run this, you'll see exactly what I mean, and we'll compare it with reduce. So I will run the cell, and, that, and as you can see, we get 74, 79, 134. So the first value is 74, which is the first value of the list. And then in the next iteration, it will take the 5 and the 74 and feed it into operator add, and the result will be 79. So we get back 79. Now, in the next iteration, We'll take this uh, 79, which is the output from uh, accumulate x operator dot add, and it'll use that 79 as the first argument, and it'll add it to the, the new argument, which in this case is 55. If that's confusing, just take a look at my reduce video, where I actually break this down in more detail. But basically, it's just taking the accumulated sum. So once again, 74 plus 5. The result of that is added to the next value, which is 55, and we get back 134. Now, if we do the same with reduce, we only get back the final value, which is 134. Now here, here's another example. We can use accumulate x with min, which will just take a running min of all the values. So here, as you can see, we start off with 74, and then it's compared with 5, so the, the, the min in that case is 5, and then the 5 is compared with 55, which in that case is still 5. So this is accumulate. It's very similar to reduce, except that we get back all of the values. So just thinking at the top of my head, it seems like it will be very useful in financial applications, moving average, a running average, and to create charts, I'm assuming that this accumulate will be very useful. I'll have to look a little deeper in that and maybe I'll make a video with the financial applications. So moving on, now we have y equals 233 and I've made the numbers purposely smaller because we're going to use accumulate with y and the operator is going to be uh, multiplication. So the iterable is 233, a list, and the function is operator.mo. Okay, so here once again we get the rolling, sort of the running multiplication of the iterable. We start off with the first value, 2, 2 times the next value, which is 3, and that equals to 6. And we take this output and multiply it by the next number, which is 3, so we get 18. Once again, just a running multiplication, or accumulated multiplication. And if we use reduce, once again, reduce just gives us the last value, which is 18. All right, so that was a quick introduction to accumulate. Now we're going to look at something called T. And T basically just makes copies of an iterable and turns them into an iterator. So let's take a look at this. We have a range of 10, which is our iterable, and we're going to make three copies of that. 
I'm just going to talk a little more about what's happening behind the scenes. So basically, uh, I did a little digging, and from what I've read, it seems that T is actually not making direct copies of the iterator. It's actually uh, making a list and making a couple of other lists that store the values of where your iterator is at. So if you're making three iterators, in this case with T, it will, I think, either make three lists or one list with that stores the indices of where each generator is currently at. And then it will have a value list, which is actually uh, holding on to the values as your iterator iterates through values. Now, instead of just being a regular list that holds all the values, they're using some sort of a clever, not algorithm, but clever mechanism, which starts deleting values that none of your iterators will see and will only keep the values that your iterators may potentially see. That might be slightly confusing, but the simple takeaway from this is that T is actually not just creating three different iterators. It's actually using a more slightly complex mechanism. And depending on the situation, T might be more useful or execute quicker than just uh, making multiple copies of an iterable and turning them into an iterator. So with that said, and T basically just makes multiple copies of an iterable and turns them into an iterator. And if we look at the next cell, you'll see that T range 10, I'm not actually feeding in any values as to how many iterators I want to create. And this is because the default value is two. If I run this, you'll see that the default value returns uh, two different T iterators. And here's just another iterator. We're going to create four different iterators or four T iterators of range four and we will iterate through them and print them out. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this is four of them. All right, so of course a generator is also a type of iterator function or yeah, an iterator, I guess. And you can see a video, I've created videos on iterables, iterators, generators, if you look at Python concepts, you guys can check that out. But basically, um, T also takes generators. So if I run this, First we create a generator, and now we'll run iterators, and if I run or type, you'll see that it made two versions of the T generator. And of course we can just uh, run this again, and you'll see it prints out all nines, which is what this generator is supposed to be yielding ten times. All right, um, now T can also be used with um, opening files. so. Uh, opening files returns an iterator. If you open, in my case, I'm going to open a text file with multiple URLs. So here, um, we can also use T and we can create multiple copies of the file iterator. So we run this, now we have first and second. And as you can see, I have two different iterators and I could cycle through the file twice. Once again, it's not creating two copies, it's actually creating a list in the back holding the values and another list holding the indices of your iterators. And it uses these indices to go through the list. So you're actually not creating multiple iterators, you're just creating a list and uh, another list that holds the indices and you're using the indices to extract values from the list. So depending on the situation, T might be quicker than actually creating copies of iterators. All right, so that was a quick introduction to T. And now the final iter tools function uh, in this video is going to be filter false. So filter false is basically the same thing as filter. I've made a video on filter as well. You guys can check that out. But instead of filtering the true values, we're going to be filtering the false values. So pretty simple, I've uh, here created a list from 0 to 9 and we're going to use map and lambda to show us which values are true and which values are false. So here you can see the first four values are false and all of the other values are true. So here we have a conditional and an iterable which is y and map with lambda x is just going to go through each value and see if the condition is true or false and return the appropriate value. All of this, map, lambda, um, I've created videos on this so you guys could check that out if you guys are confused. But 
now I'm going to be running filter false. So filter false, unlike filter, is going to be returning the values that return a false value in your uh, conditional. So here x is greater than 3 is our condition and um, whatever values return a false value is what we're going to get back. Okay, and we get back 0, 1, 2, 3 because 0, 1, 2, 3 are false in this situation. So that's why we get it back. All right, so that was a pretty quick introduction to accumulate t and filter false. And I've kind of gone through this, uh, this video pretty quickly because you guys should uh, be fairly accustomed to everything um, we've gone over this video. So lambda, uh, map, reduce, um, generators, iterators, iterable, etc. So you guys should be uh, fairly used to that stuff. If not, just check out my previous videos and um, you'll get a much clearer understanding of everything in this video. Now with that said, um, I still have product left. I am not sure, I guess I should do product and I'll see, make sure that there's nothing else left. And after that, I want to create a video on basic logging. I have another video um, that's being edited and then I need to think about what I will create. So I'll see you guys in the next video.